we're going to talk about a list of some of the key changes, not all of them, but some of the most important ones. We will go further in depth about these changes as the series goes on. Hotma states that owners are no longer required to use EIB to verify tenant employment and income information during an interim reexamination. This will change the way interim certifications will be processed. Next is interim certifications. HOTMA changed rules about the IRs when a resident reports an income change. Owners and agents are required to complete an interim only when the adjusted income increases or decreases by at least 10%. Hardship relief, this is a new one for us. HOTMA creates hardship relief provisions for child care, health and medical care, and attendant care, and auxiliary apparatus expenses and deductions. This change will affect how you count child care and health care. It's formerly known as medical expense, but now through HOTMA is renamed into health and medical care. Next is imputed asset income. HOTMA raises the imputed asset threshold from $5,000 that we were used to to $50,000, adjusted annually for inflation. This is a big change, especially for imputing assets. Next, we have mandatory deductions. HOTMA increases the elderly disabled family deduction to $525. Self-certification of assets. HOTMA permits owners to accept the self-certification of net assets if estimated to be equal to $50,000 adjusted on an inflation or annual basis also. We'll see you next week for Hotma tidbit number two.